I invite here uh, Emmanuel, please, and uh, also uh, our coordinator, Monica, and of course, Ramiro. Monica, are you coming? <laughs> I have to thank uh, Emmanuel because we involved him in the last part and he accepted to to make it the last part. But I want <laughs> but give us your impression of this workshop and <laughs> and uh, what could be the future for that. But uh, anyway, I would like to introduce Emmanuel Galucci. He's a PhD in physical chemistry, the principal PhD of uh, head research construction materials at SICA, uh, at SICA Technology, a global research and development company of the SICA AG group. So uh, it's also partner of Lord's Tennis, and we would like uh, that they help to us to close with this uh, network event, this international e event, and would, we would like to know what is your opinion and your conclusions for this, and probably the future? Yeah, I was feeling like the microphone is not working, but <laughs> it was good. Um, yeah, as, uh, as uh, leading a research department for, for, for new additives and uh, new uh, additives for concrete, I mean, to be honest, uh, durability is not a topic. Uh, so this is maybe a concern. Uh, that's maybe probably a conflict between uh, owners and contractors and suppliers. That means that uh, owners or contractors want to have the cheapest materials or the performance for the cheapest mm -hmm. price, and owners probably um, wants also to have the cheapest uh, or the lowest cost. Now the question is, I mean, as individuals, I'm sure that we, none of us is compromising on quality. I mean, if you buy a new car or whatever you buy, I mean, you have the choice between the cheap one, the cheap version, or the bit more expensive for long lasting or higher quality. And I think that probably, very few of us compromise on this. Uh, the question is why do we compromise on the quality of the structures? And I think we were talking a lot about the concrete properties and concrete uh, seen as a material which is not long lasting. There was the example of uh, the, the bridge in Genoa, uh, which gives a very bad uh, image of concrete to the public. But in fact, what failed in that bridge? The steel. And to be honest, we have solutions for this. I think, I mean, this is an approximated figures, but I think 90% of the degradation or the failure of concrete in the field are due to the corrosion of rebounds. The question is, why do we compromise on the quality of the steel? I mean, there are solutions. I mean, we could protect the steel. We never do that. We try to put salt and pepper in the concrete, expecting that probably it will, I, it will uh, uh, be a long lasting. So this, this is one of my comments, I would say. I think it's wonderful your summary, and uh, of course, one of we have solutions for the case of Geneva, of course, uh, actually. Uh, probably Monica, you could help here, um, at least along the line. Not also the de design and maintenance, but uh, also we actually we have other type of solutions like monitoring of the structures and also new materials. I think I think monitoring is is part of the of the game anyway. So so far we do it with uh, sending people looking at the structure or evaluating. That was shown by uh, Chile uh, about the uh, piles of the of the uh, oil platforms. I mean they are they are monitored. I mean we send people um, self monitoring uh, is the trend anyway because we go for for electronics or, or communication things. So. Uh, having self uh, self detection of problems, or, or, or I mean, this is this is definitively uh, a trend and a direction. Uh, 
but again uh, it's on the willingness of I mean this has a cost whether you send uh, people to look at the structure and to evaluate it or whether you implement uh, self-detection uh, uh, equipment in the in the structure I mean this has a cost and again the question will be who is daring to pay that cost I mean for some structures um, it's no question I think for a bridge or for any structure where there might be uh, problems related to the security of human being I mean it's no question I mean usually we, 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 we invest in there but for infrastructures or structures where in which we don't uh, fear any any uh, damages in terms of humans then this is this is more critical I guess I mean if I take the example of Lawsonis we have different types of structures if I look at the windmills for instance um, if a windmill falls I mean that's uh, that's that's problematic. That costs a lot, but uh, but the danger is not uh, is not that high. So the question is, uh, I think it's easier to compromise on the on the durability of a, of a wind. Uh, it's easier to compromise on the durability of a windmill than on the durability of a bridge. So that's all the question. I mean, where you want to make some bets and uh, take the risk of having failures or not, and that's all only related to a question of cost in the end. Because I think we have solutions for most of the problems. Thanks, Emmanuel. Uh, as I mean, from the contractor point of view, uh, what we try to do is to, well, for sure, to optimize the cost because if not, we will not perform the the, the work site. But what we try is to uh, fulfill with guarantees all the requirements that the client has asked for, and to uh, follow the codes. I mean, if the euro codes uh, we are in category five. Uh, the euro code uh, gives you all the requirements you need to fulfill in order to assure that your structure will last 120 years and this is the concrete cover the the, the, the minimum quantity of cement the water treatment ratio etc etc and what we do in the, the, the contr as contractor is to fulfill all the requirements all the additional requirements that our client give us and at minimum cost for sure that's why I'm not asking uh, additional admixtures. Uh, I mean, I, I think that uh, the contractor is not the one that should ask for a uh, mixture, but is the client and the codes. I mean, we need the codes to evolution, to, to, to go farther. We need the clients to go farther in the requirements, and then we will uh, look for additional admixture materials, smart materials, in order to be able to fulfill all these requirements. But for sure, not from our initiative, yeah because yeah. We, but we should reduce that the cost. That, wa that was not to blame the, con the contractors, yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm <laughs> blaming no one. I, mean, I work for a company and our ultimate goal is to make more money when we can, eh? so <laughs> that's we, we, we follow the same, uh, the same uh, philosophy. <laughs> Someone else would like to say something to contribute maybe to this open discussion? Feel free, yeah? It's the point. It's, it's the moment, to be honest, because we do believe that it's, it's not a single point of view who has co to contribute in this topic. It's like a added value supply chain where the, we have many different actors, and some of, of us are contributing in a specific areas, but we cannot approach as a whole. So we need each other. Some of them prescribing the solutions, addressing exactly what is needed, and what I'm able to pay for. In the second stage, someone is able to bring something that is able to fit exactly the expectation. And when I say expectation, I understand this in a very wide sense in terms of economical, social, with the main target that we have defined. So this, this is the scope that we need to fit, not only performance-wise, globally speaking, okay? And lately, we need to also, as human beings, promote this kind of mindset in a more closed uh, environment, we need exactly to, to make like a kind of preacher for this kind of topic. We need to talk about this, we need to implement this, we need to believe, to believe in it, and try to be more reliable in what we are promoting. That is the point. I don't know if someone of you would like to add something else, or maybe Kim, to Jesus, sorry for the shift. Yeah. Just to, to Jesus Rodriguez, just to add uh, a comment that we need to progress a bit more in 
try to take into account the degradation models, material degradation models, in, into the structural performance in order to evaluate the, the, the risk of the structure that is being de deteriorated. There is a clear gap between the material experts and the structural ones that we need to improve a lot in order at the end to give the response. And the second comment, I do not have any interest on the Genoa bridge, but I have a different information. It's, it's still under discussion, but it's, it's, in my opinion, it's not so clear your Emmanuel comment on the potential failure of this bridge. I can comment a bit, but I'm also no, not involved on it. And um, what is the actual state of uh, um, to, to to understand the reason why it happened? And I think uh, it's, it's an opinion, and also what I read from the the, the news magazines. I'm not directly involved on this uh, examination, but it's just a combination of effect. Uh, but actually, what uh, was clear after some discussion of some colleague was not a material um, fault. The material at that time was good, uh, was good developed. It's not at the time there was, n we have to think about it, at the time there was not um, exposition classes. So the, co the, the bridge was, pro mm, was developed without any exposition classes requirements. So the, the material was not uh, the, f the, the topic there, but it's the maintenance that maybe failed at the time, and we have to consider the harsh environment uh, there, because the, the, the bridge is uh, really some kilometer far away from the sea, and this is what we address it now in Los Senes, also uh, to, to manage this in so such an harsh environment that at the time was not really uh, was not really so uh, uh, the, the, the tension and the requirements of it. So. Uh, what Emmanuel said, I think it's, uh, it's quite right. So the, the topic is here. We have now here the knowledge to have a very good concrete, but the concrete will anyway produce crack if not well casted. And so we will come back with the problem again if not the material is controlled. I mean. I'm Daida, I'm a PhD student at Helmholtz, Germany. My question is more policy related. I mean, uh, we saw many uh, good technologies, many solutions which are fast emerging, maybe confirmed, not confirmed, but uh, why are the codes not updated so frequently as well so that we have a synergy between research and what is actually applied in the, on the site? Because the designer, I mean, a normal engineer, he just sees what is written in the code, but he doesn't know maybe how much research has progressed some comments in this direction would be useful. I have a, a comment to what Pepe say before actually, not related to, to the last comment. If, uh, you say, Pepe, before that y your customer are not asking to, if, if the customer are not asking, you are not providing some uh, innovative solution or any other solution that will improve the durability because of the cost. And of course, it's not uh, your, uh, so you, you, yeah, you don't have to propose if uh, you are not asked for. But for example, from European uh, Commission, that are some uh, requirements now that they said you have to use so uh, a very low uh, CO2 foot point, uh, footprint uh, material so they are required and the customer are required sometimes APDs with uh, using material with a low footprint can be also from European Commission uh, an help if comes something that have to say also to the customer please be careful also to this aspect and so the a driving force that uh, can help this, like uh, for example now the uh, reduced CO2 footprint. That they are just asking for that, but sometimes they're not related with the durability. Yes, w well, uh, s some. I mean, we have the codes, and, and some clients are already asking uh, more requirements beyond the codes. It's something that is already happen, uh, already happening. Uh, some of them are asking you to fulfill additional requirements. So. And regarding the CO2 footprint and the sustainability, 
it's it's also I mean there are some clients that are also asking for additional requirements in this sense uh, with respect to the codes uh, maybe mostly in edification in buildings sorry in, in buildings with this uh, uh, certification green certification that are now uh, more present than than before um, and also from a durability point of view some huge sites are uh, some clients are asking for uh, additional measurements not uh, uh, not mandatory in the codes so some driving force are already acting uh, the European Union uh, uh, um, pillars are uh, forcing the codes to change a little bit and also some clients are more uh, more uh, prone to follow the sustainability rules and this is something that is changing Ch changing probably too much slow that needed but it's something that is changing now We should come to the end because it's quite late. <laughs> so uh, I would appreciate that uh, Monica tried to close this uh, workshop and uh, give his thanks from the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maria, and congratulations for this uh, workshop event. I think this was a, a special mix uh, of speakers, of uh, persons interested in this uh, topic. And it was a unique chance to, to meet us, the Law Chains team, but also that we could meet you. And it's still going on because we have the lunch break and networking uh, um, is, is going on, as I said. So um, we heard uh, different contributions today from different uh, perspectives, different point of views and I view. And I think this was also um, the most interesting part that we have such uh, um, considerations from the different uh, directions. So I would like to thank you, to thank Maria again, and um, have a good networking and good day home. Thank you.